Welcome to a series called The Book of Enoch, where we're going through the Book of Enoch verse by verse, because the Book of Enoch is by far the best example of what it'll be like in the days of Noah uh, in the end times. And it's important that we go through this. Even Jude said that to look for the prophecy of Enoch so we can see what these watchers will be like, um, and because they dwell among us right now to this very day. And as we go through this, what we've seen is a group of angels have fallen. They've corrupted mankind, uh, brought forth a race of Nephilim. And Azazel was one specific one that was labeled as somebody who corrupted mankind because of the particular things that he taught mankind, which ultimately led to uh, God saying that abide all sin under him. Like all sin came from Azazel ultimately. And because he brought weapons and jewelry and fornication and, and just all the things that places like the U.S. is thriving in. So we have to look for, well, what will that look like in the end times? And that's what it'll look like. And God is now divvying punishment and said to lock Azazel up into a pit until Judgment Day. And we'll pick it up in nine. <clears throat> and the Gabriel said the Lord proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the watchers from amongst men and cause them to go forth. Send them one against the other that they may destroy each other in battle for the lengths of days shall they not have. All right, so this is kind of interesting. I'm gonna go back to Genesis on this one because ultimately what we're seeing here is he's saying, okay, so you got all these children of the watchers. You're gonna to need to kill them is what you're gonna to need to do. And how they go into about killing them is, is, is really fascinating. But let's just start with, he starts to begin to turn them against each other. And ultimately God says here, proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the watchers from amongst men and cause them to go forth, send them one against the other that they may destroy each other in battle for length of days shall they not have. Now, this is really interesting because up until this point, people lived for you know 900 years pretty easily. And what we see then in this case, and we'll go back to the same moment in time that we see in Genesis, and we'll go back to 6.1. Now, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born to them, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And there's that fall of those 200 angels sleeping with the women. The Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterwards when the sons of men came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old and men of renown. So here what we're seeing is God and Enoch are really, you know, he says the same thing in Enoch that he said there is ultimately that, you know, they're not living 900 years anymore. 125 is the max. And it's interesting because obviously when you read Genesis, you read about the corruption of man and how he decreases their years on this earth to from a thousand to essentially a hundred. Uh, what we're also seeing is that this is why this was the cause of the reason for uh, the massive decrease in life expectancy of humans. Send them one against the other that they may destroy each other in battle for length of days they shall not have. And no one requests that they, i.e. their fathers, make of these shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf, for they hope to live an eternal life and that each one of them will live 500 years. And the Lord said unto Michael, go bind Semjaza and his associates who have united themselves and women so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. So here, these people, you know, like they're thinking, okay, you guys, they were thinking they're gonna live forever. Uh, but no, even even these Nephilim, they're down to 500 years. The Lord said to Michael, go by and Semjaza and his associates who have united themselves with women so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And when their sons have slain one another and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for 70 generation in the valley of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation till the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. All right, this is pretty interesting because ultimately what you have is you have God saying in Genesis, you could live 125 years, but these are humans. 
And therein lies the difference. The Nephilim, they were very different. They were part angels. And they would have lived forever because that's how long angels live. So whereas in humans went from 900 to 100, the Nephilim went from eternity to 500. And so the, all this is just essentially saying, you know, earth is out of control. This generations need to go a lot faster than what we're seeing because the amount of time they have on the earth um, is corrupting the earth and destroying all of mankind. Um, so there you go. Any thoughts or insight on that? Definitely put that below.